here's the unmixed vocal. And here's the mixed vocal using only Logic stock plugins. In the dark, I can give you just a piece of me. Most people think you need really expensive plugins to get this type of sound, but you don't. Using only stock plugins, I'm going to show you how to get a pro level sound using only four plugins and two effects. But what you might not expect, the most important thing about mixing a vocal doesn't even need a plugin. So linking on with that, the first thing we do is set the gain for our audio file. Let's see how loud it is compared to everything else at the moment. So it's far too quiet. So in Logic Pro, we go over here, click this drop down thing on the side. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the audio file and then turn this up. We're turning the gain up. The gain isn't the volume, the gain is how loud this is going into everything else. So let's go up to about here. Looks good. Now let's listen and see what that sounds like. So this is the most important first stage. You've got to try and get the gain so you can actually vaguely hear the vocal and it sounds about right. Not crazy loud and not crazy quiet. So we've got the kind of gain in a good place. Next thing is pitch correction. So we're going to use the stock plugin here in Logic. So if you click on the drop down and set pitch correction, then what you need to do is select the key for the song. So this is in D sharp. And the main thing you're going to tweak here is the response time. The response time is kind of how quickly the effect is coming on, the auto-tune sound. So the lower that is, the more you're going to sound like T-Pain and Cher. And the higher that number is, the more relaxed, the more natural it's going to sound. Let me demonstrate. So I'm going to be turning this response time down and up. So down, full speed. Is that kind of robotic sound if I turn it all the way up to like here very natural but it's not really kind of fixing the pitch so let's kind of get that just right There we go, so that kind of sounds nice and in tune, but it doesn't sound like we've overly tuned Claire's vocals there. The next thing is EQ. So let's EQ this. And I see far, far too many people do crazy EQ. Honestly, this type of thing is what I do in 99% of my songs. If you're doing crazy, massive cuts and hundreds of boosts, you're doing something wrong or the vocals are recorded terribly. So stage one, what do we do? So stage one, we're going to roll off all the bottom end just in case there's any like rumble or low hum in the vocal. So let's do that. So we won't really audibly hear this, but it just means any like weird noise, any low rumble, any stuff like that isn't going to come into our recordings. Next thing we're going to do is have a little sweep and find where the vocal sounds a little bit honky. This is one of the most important things for EQ in a vocal. So we're going to sweep this around and then try and find where we have a problem. In the dark, I can give you just a piece of me. A single spark has me falling down a so there, that sounds really honky. So we found that, let's take that out. So we can now move our EQ downwards and take a little bit of that out. And then I think I did a little boost here. Let's have a look at that. If I make this too bright, the S is sounds too similar. She sounds like a snake here. Too much. So let's just do a little bit. Next thing, we're going to use a de-esser on our vocals. So de-esser is a thing that turns down the S's. 
So let's open that up here. So this is a little bit complicated and it takes a little while to practice this, but the frequency is kind of where the sibilance, where the S's are, and you're trying to get this to be turned down. So the threshold is how much it turns it down. So you might need to kind of sweep through things here until you can, f until you can hear that it's turning down just the S's. just a piece it just turned down the s there so you're going to keep sweeping around with this until you find where just the sound of the s's are and then only the s's are being turned down just a little bit on to the next thing a compressor this is the main thing that's going to kind of average out the volume so you can hear it consistently um so what we're going to do here is we're going to keep it simple um and what i'm going to do is mainly concentrate on the threshold. So the threshold is kind of, uh, by lowering that is how much compression is gonna happen. So we're gonna be looking for somewhere between like five and seven dBs of compression, just on the loud bits when she's singing really loud. So let's just get that working. This kind of ballpark might work. It's different on the genre, but I'd say if you're doing more than 10, you might be squishing it too much. So now we've got a kind of vocal that is in tune. The kind of tone of it is okay. We've averaged out the volume of it. We've got rid of some of the S's. The next thing we're gonna do now is add effects. So to do this in Logic, you will be clicking down on here. If I was to set up a new one, you click on bus, and then you click on a number there, and then a little aux track will appear. Bus three. And then the aux, which is an auxiliary channel, is going to appear right next to it, if you can't see it. So this, by turning that up and down, that will affect how much I'm sending the vocal to this effect. So let's get some reverb on here. Again, using only stock stuff. Reverb. So go over the top to start with, send far too much of it, and then you can dial it back. So let's hear what this sounds like. In the dark, I can give you Also, I'd probably move this up a little bit. Vocal reverb, somewhere between like two and three seconds generally sounds good. So what we can also do with this plugin here in Logic is we can EQ it, because we don't really want really low muffly reverb. So you can do like a shape like this. The same with the high stuff because again her, her vocals there we're kind of hearing the yeses and just sounds a bit like harsh and glassy so if we turn this down a bit now well, i've rolled off the bottom and i've rolled off the top and now we're going to like adjust this to taste so we're going to turn down the amount of reverb we have now because at the moment that sounds a bit rubbish so we turn this down here In the dark. Give you just a piece of me A single spark Has me falling down upon my knees I can't stop this feeling That's a bit better. So let's do another effect here. We are going to be doing some delay. So same thing again. You click on bus. Let's do bus four. And then handily, right next to it, appears our effects. So we are going to do, let's try stereo delay, and then maybe an eighth note. Let's try that. We're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna crank this and send loads of this lead vocal to this effects track, tweak it, and then we'll dial it back and see how it sounds. So we do the same thing we did to the other one, turn the high cut down so we hear less of the kind of really high brightness of her delays. 
with the main lead vocal all these repeats that are panning left and right and now we can turn this down and blend it in as well in the dark, I can give you just a piece of me a single spark has me falling down see how far we've come so I'm going to switch all of those plugins off dink, dink, dink. back to the beginning so with now those plugins on here's the unmixed vocal So that is a quick way to get a professional lead vocal. Don't copy exactly what I'm doing because every vocal is different, but the main thing to notice is the order that I did things and how subtle things were. So I hope that's been helpful. If you need any more tips or need me to go in more detail, please comment down below and I'll see you in the next one.